Okay, everybody, welcome back. I'm going to do just a quick demo here. This is of the Magnapan Point Sevens. So they're small little babies. Um, there's two Magnapan base panels, one on each side. You can see them facing each other. We're listening to um, the Rockna uh, Wave Dream Signature Balanced. Um, coming out of a streamer, um, goes into the Rockna. And then we're going out to uh, the, the two glowing things on either side, which is the AGD um, uh, Production. Uh, Vivace, and then down front now we've got a new player in the room, which is a um, not a player, but he's he's a player. Um, is the uh, Nat Audio Magnetostat Line Stage, okay? And and I I am going to uh, attempt to prove in a in a pretty severe manner uh, uh, how much a line stage can add. Okay, now. You know how you hear people talking, oh, well, it, you don't need the preamp anymore because of volume control on the DAC, you know, and um, um, not when it's a world-class preamp, okay? If it's a $3,500, $6,000 preamp, whatever, price doesn't really matter, okay? Let's say they were all free, okay? Um, there's a level that you would consider world-class. We, You know, the audio files that are that are steeped in the we know which ones they are there's just a handful there's this one here that i have there's the um cat sl sl1 um there and there's others you know i'm not really i know that it's just a handful though because that that operate that, that are you know world class level where people really there there's a, only a handful <clears throat> and i don't know them all but i um, i do know these and i'll tell you this thing did something amazing for this rig so um, right now, I'm just going to play a piece for a little bit, and then I, I'm going to swap out amps, and and um, I want to try Jeff Rowland's monos in here um, at 900 watts per channel. We're going to bridge them and make them 900, and then we'll try some fun stuff, a little more dynamic, maybe a little rock, maybe a little something. Let's see let's see what uh, 900 watts can do with these little baby magna pans, and see if we can uh, see if we can make them squeal. Actually, they won't. We'll we'll. Uh, Maggie's are really, really, really good like that. You got to know what you're doing, though. Okay, so let's check this out. Dido uh, Hurricanes is the name. Dido is the artist. Hurricanes is the song. Or the album, I think. By the way, this is just my phone. It's not my stereo mics. I don't feel like going and getting that thing right now. You'll get the message. Oh, I want to wake up with your weight by my side. And I wanna think that you look good as you rise, and I wanna turn to you, turn around by your side, and I wanna think. Vocal is so beautiful. But now to say what it sounds like here. So let me face incredible texture. The sound and fury. Let me face. My client does not get his preamp. I'm keeping it. And I want to see you as you walk through the door. And time will make us some ways less and some ways more. And I want to talk of nothing as the world passes by. And I want to think, but now to say, let me fade. Sound and fury Let me face Hurricanes Let me not turn away From happiness or pain There's just, just a different ebb and flow going on in, in here my heart and in my head Let me face
Um, that's epic. And, you know, I got to share with you that I'm very pleased that um, my audio journey is going gonna, is gonna to be really, really fun the next couple of weeks having this preamp here. Um, I'm, I'm, I will have to buy one for myself as well. Uh, absolutely. If, if it continues like this, right now we're just listening to the little puppies. When I get my three sevens uh, complete, which I'll be doing, um, we're going to try those. I've got some special speakers coming in that are monitors that are, I'll tell you more about them when they're here. But um, this is going to be a lot of fun. I'm already, um, I already know it. I'm really stoked about the next, next couple of weeks are going to be a blast. That is one heck of a, of a line stage. And you know what? The only way a DAC is sounding better without a line stage is if you if it's not a world class uh, line stage. If it's just a half measure, then it doesn't beat the volume control. But when the preamps are made at this level, it adds something, or it doesn't. I don't know whether it, I think it's revealing something really. Is it's extracting it out of the signal, but it gives so much more. Then without it, it's not even funny. I mean, it makes or breaks the rig, honestly. That one piece, the preamp. That's what's happening right now with this preamp. Granted, it's $26,000. It's 26000 really a commensurate with what I pay for it as distributor? I honestly think there's too much profit for me at twenty six grand, I don't need that much profit. I'd rather sell it for less, and I'd rather pay the company that made it more and sell it for less to you guys or whoever wants it. I think that's better for the future of hi-fi than fake high numbers so that we can discount it for half off so that you guys feel like you got a discount because it's a stroke job. We marked it up on purpose so that we can mark it back down for you so that you feel like you got a deal, but we just totally stroked you. You're paying the same amount. So consider that for a second. I would love to change the way things are done in the industry. I think the industry needs a change. Me as a dealer, I'm willing to take less. I don't need that level of profit to rake on my audiophile buddies, friends. Man, I don't, I, I can't do that to family, okay? As a manufacturer, I am willing to cut my, my um, retail price down in half and not do discounting. Get strict with the dealers and say there's zero discounting, but we're going to lower our price so that people aren't running out of the industry terrified that we're crazy because think there's no there's new blood that's on the outside of our industry looking in right now but they won't come in because it looks too insane if we can just calm stuff down and get real and lower the prices to reasonable levels so that people don't have to gouge it's actually the bottom line is if you really analyze it the dealers are discounting to that level anyways so why not make the retail price that level and avoid the stroke job? The way it is right now, the dealers are discounting. They're making it that price anyways, and then the the, the customer is like, "Oh, well, I got a, I got a, you know, a big discount." Well, that was planned and that was strategized into our marketing plan for you, Mr. Buyer. I mean, consider that we make the price, okay? So if you're consistently trying to shop the deals around, consistently trying to call up dealers and get a lower price and get a lower price, you know what we're going to do? We're going to double our damn price. And that's what's happened. Look at all the $250,000 amps, $400,000 speakers. Manufacturers have doubled their price because they know they can't control. We can't control the dealer from discounting. He'll do it anyways. Maybe he won't put it on the internet that way, but he will when he's mouth to mouth. So if we want to control it, we double the price, then the dealer can discount, and we get the same amount. It's the same money. You guys are paying the same price as if you would if we lowered the retail price and didn't discount. But I think you'd rather have a little story that you think you got one over on somebody or you got a discount. But that's childish. Let's all come to that conclusion. All right? So let's make it a better place. Let's make Hi-Fi a better place. Because you know what? It's cool. It's a cool hobby. This is a great thing to do with our time. 
You know, it really is. It makes the world a better place. Everybody's more calm and more, you know, just relaxed. If you have a good rig and you didn't spend too much. Um, <laughs> I've seen some people max their credit cards out. Not such a good idea. Um, but there's plenty for all. And, you know, let's try and keep that in mind. We need to, we need to change the industry. We can't continue on the way we've been going. It's headed for a huge crash with a bunch of, you know, people scratching their heads saying, what the hell happened? Well, you know, it went crazy. That's what happened. Went off the rails and people didn't check their egos. And, uh, and that's what happened. But I, I don't want to see that happen to Hi-Fi. I really value this hobby. I value the industry. I honor it. I honor all you guys. So I'm trying to bring something good. I know I come in a little harsh and aggro sometimes because I'm fed up. I'm pissed, man. And, and, and if I get it in my mind right then and I'm trying to communicate right at the time, I've still got that, that, that forked tongue because I'm angry and, 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 you know, I'll, 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 I'll try and chill back on that because you know why I really want to reach you with my communication. And when, when there's that, 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 um, a tone of voice, people will shut their ears and that's not what I want right now at all. But I am trying to show some things that I'm passionate about, share some things, share some truths and some realities so you guys can see it from my eyes. And I've, I've been, I am an audiophile. I started out like you guys were as a buyer and going to the show as an attendee. And now it's 20 some odd years later and I'm an exhibitor at the show and, uh, and, and, and pretty established with my, with my contacts in the industry. I know a lot of people and... I love them all. The dealers, the manufacturers. I got a lot of great buddies that I, I see at the shows, you know? And if we were all in one room together, the buyers, the manufacturers, the dealer, everybody, everybody really wants the same thing. But somehow we're all discombobulated. There's a big stroke job going on with these per perceived value is just at a big time, just run amok. You know, there is no value. It's like, well, how do I value a $250,000 amplifier next to a two thousand dollar amplifier how do we even compare them well they are very similar um more than you think in the dna but anyways so let's make it a better place let's make it a better place i'm all for it and um i will do like i said i'll put my ass on the line i'm risking it right now you know doing the things i'm doing a little bit but i i believe that people will see my intent and understand and say hey i see what he's doing you know, he's really fighting for it. And um, I'm willing to take less as a manu uh, as, as a dealer. So the things that I deal, I've already approached the manufacturers that I import and so forth. And I tell them, uh, you know, I'd like to, you know, look, I'm going to discount. OK, that's the reality. OK, I'm not going to post it anywhere. It's not going to ever be advertised. But I do give my clients a discount because I like to give them a discount. It's more so because I because I can't stand charging them the price that you just gave me. That's what it is. I can't stomach it. So I'm going to discount them because I feel bad charging full boat. So why not? Why don't we, instead of making me the good guy, why don't we make the brand the good guy? Because, you know, right now nobody trusts the brands, you know, so let's make the brand the good guy. Okay. So I will relinquish half of my, of my, of my, um, profit. I'll relinquish half of it and we can give that half to the marketplace in the form of a lower retail price. Okay. And then we could even, let's say if we could even divvy it, I could even take some up and we could say, well, a third and, and then, and then a portion, a portion of it, whatever it is that I'm, I will relinquish, I'll give a portion to the buyer as a discount and I'll give a portion to the manufacturer as an, as I'll buy it for more. Okay, so I'm, I'm not sure if you're hearing that. I am, as a dealer, am willing to take less profit from the many, from a, a higher price from the manufacturer and sell it to my people, my buyers in the field, my buyers that I have, my clients, to sell it for a lower price than retail. So I'm going to take it off both sides and I'm going to be the one that contributes it out of my pocket. Okay, and as a manufacturer, I'm going to knock my retail price in half. And I'm not going to discount and I'm going to tell my people, you don't play the stroke job with my cables, you know, or with whatever I'm selling. You don't play the game because it's just, it's lies, you know, it's dishonest. 
It's lack of integrity. Where do you think it's going to lead? It's not leading anywhere good. Come on. Let's band together. Let's band together and bring this back because you know what? Hi-Fi is awesome. This is an awesome pastime. It has the power to bring people together from all different walks of lives. I mean, look at a show. Look at the people. I have the most interesting clients in the world, and I love all of them. And they all invite me to come and visit them wherever they are, all over the globe. And I get to go visit these people. It's so awesome. I mean, this is seriously, it's the best thing I could ever think of. And then when I get there, they're going to have a killer audio system, and we're going to listen to tunes. It's like, dude, are you kidding me? That is like total, like I couldn't have planned it or thought it up better myself. You know, it's like, that is really cool. So, you know, let's think about that. Let's not spoil, let's not spoil the hi-fi for new people. Let's, 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 let's bring new people in, man. Let's expand this thing. Let's turn it into something that everybody does, not just nerdly dudes. Because I am a total nerdly freakazoid. And, you know, it can't be just us. You gotta have some normal people. So, anyways, okay, so there's a little, little piece of my mind, brother. So, um, I will, uh, see ya.